Hey, I'm Alec, and today I'm going to show you how to succeed with larger nozzles. One of the biggest hurdles in 3D printing for a lot of people isn't cost or quality, it's time. And my introduction to 3D printing was cosplay and props, so I was looking for detail. I didn't care how long it would take because any deadline I had was one set by me and if I missed it, I was only disappointed, I had no one waiting on me. But if I'm a professional or I'm a business person that needs a part to be done quickly, then maybe I don't care about detail, I just need it done. You may want a bigger nozzle. So if you have a larger nozzle like the Volcano, it can make it a lot easier to make big parts faster. So first off, let me make a point. This fill here was printed with a 1.2 millimeter nozzle, a 0.9 millimeter layer height, and 200 millimeters tall. Took three hours and 44 minutes. This fill was a 0.8 millimeter nozzle, 0.6 millimeter layer height. It is 150 millimeters tall and took three hours and 44 minutes. This fill was a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, 0.3 millimeter layer height, 103 millimeters tall and took three hours and 44 minutes. So these three fills all took the exact same amount of time to finish. Now, if this is something that I'm just prototyping and I don't care about detail, then I would go for this one because I could get a much bigger part in a lot less time. Whereas if I need detail, maybe I'll stick with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle. But this just shows the significant difference in how big of a part you can make in the same amount of time just because you have a bigger nozzle. So with the Volcano hot end system, it is a bit different than the V6 hot end. They do have the same heat sink and heat break, heater cartridge, thermistors, but they do have something different, and that is the heater block and the nozzle along with the sock. So instead, with this heater block, the heater cartridge doesn't go through sideways with filament coming through this way. It comes in through the top along with the thermistor cartridge, and so that keeps it parallel with the filament path, giving it a much better uh, thermal conversion where it's really getting heat from the heater cartridge into the block and into the filament a lot quicker. And on top of that, the nozzle has a much longer throw. It's about 8.5 millimeters, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it does give the filament significantly more time to heat up before it comes out of the nozzle. So you can actually push out 1.2 millimeters of plastic out of that nozzle. So first off, temperature. Now, because you are pushing out significantly more plastic than you are with the smaller nozzle, you need to make sure that heat transfers to the filament as quickly as it can. Regularly with PLA, I'm printing at 250 degrees Celsius. Now I will tweak that a bit if I notice that I'm starting to burn the filament and see some either discoloration or bubbling, but I've had filament where it's it's printing just fine and I take it off the build plate and it's just, it's just crumbling. It's just falling apart because there's just no layer adhesion. I've had prints fall apart at 230 degrees Celsius with PLA, but be totally fine at 250. So you'll have to tweak it and see, maybe you could just slow down your print and have a lower temperature, speed up your prints and go even higher, but there's gonna be some tweaking involved from printing with that much filament. Now with perimeters, there is something else you'll want to consider. So let me set these guys aside and grab a couple different fills. Let's put this over here. So these three fills all have the same wall thickness of 2.4 millimeters. For this fill, a 2.4 millimeter wall means that I have Two perimeters, 1.2 millimeter nozzle times two, 2.4 wall. This is a 0.8 nozzle, so that means it is three perimeters. This is a 0.4 nozzle, it is six perimeters. So across these three, they all have the same wall thickness of 2.4 millimeters, but it takes three times as long to do it on this fill, which meant that while well, this guy took about 58 minutes, this one took about eight hours. With perimeters, you're gonna to wanna to avoid going to a uh, one wall thickness. Even though it's kind of a lot, you may notice some gaps between where they start and end, but it'll make for really strong and great vases. Whereas if you have two perimeters, they're pretty tough. I've dropped this fill on the floor a couple times and it's bounced up pretty high after that and not has, doesn't have a single crack in it after that. Now infill. So because your perimeters give most of the thickness to your prints, you don't need to be too concerned about infill. In fact, these, all these prints were 5% infill, and even this fill was 5% infill, and it's pretty dang heavy. So the top layers do need to have a couple more added to them. I usually print with five top layers, even with a 0.9 millimeter layer height, just because you have less material to bridge over the top of. 
It doesn't have a significant impact on strength. Like I still notice that these are really strong, even with that 5% infill. Now with layer height, you could theoretically take a 1.2 millimeter nozzle down to a 0.05 millimeter or 50 micron layer height, but I don't really see why you'd want to do that because the whole point of having the big nozzle is to print thick layers faster. Like that's something I'd have better suited towards a 0.5 millimeter nozzle. With the 1.2, I like to keep the layer heights between 0.3 millimeters and 0.9 because that's 25 to 75% of the uh, nozzle size. The speeds are gonna be a bit different because with the normal 0.4 millimeter nozzle, I keep it around 45, 50 to balance speed and quality. Whereas with this layer height, I'm around 20, 25 millimeters per second, just because putting out that much melted material takes a lot of energy and you really wanna be sure that it has the time to melt. Otherwise, I've had it go too fast where even though it's at 250 degrees Celsius, it just doesn't adhere to the last layer. You're printing PLA at 250 degrees Celsius with very low infill percentage and a lot of material coming out, which means you need to have really good cooling so you don't just have a blob sitting on your bed and actually a part you meant to have. But cooling does have this unintended issue of activating thermal runaway sometimes. Now, depending on your fan, the fan bracket geometry and where it's blowing on the nozzle, the heater cartridge, all sorts of things, is it bouncing back from the build plate or the part? you can run into thermal runaway because the heater cartridge just can't keep up with maintaining the temperature. And so all that air blows back into it and starts cooling it down to the point that I've seen a printer go from 245 degrees Celsius, the fan kicks on and it's just dropping. And once it hits like 220, safety features kick in and kill the print, which depending on how long your print's been going, that could be a pretty severe loss or you just splice it and print that second half. Uh, but it's a safety feature that has the unintended side effect of potentially stopping your print because it's just too much filament. With supports, you may wanna play with the spacing, which is how far apart is each pass of the supports because with the larger nozzle, it's not as good as bridging as it would be with a smaller nozzle. So I'll have to play with is what is too wide, what's too thin, because it does use a lot of material to, on supports and then that's just something you're gonna to have to throw away. So you can try and go a little bit further and add a lot of interface layers to compensate, or you can have it really close and less interface layers. For me, in a 1.2 millimeter nozzle, a 0.9 millimeter layer height, I do the same as usual, double the layer height with a 1.8 millimeter gap. You heard me, 1.8 millimeters, and that's still just barely fusing to the part, so it does take a little effort to break that off. Bed adhesion is important too, except in the opposite way you might think. You wanna make sure that if you're using any adhesives or you have a brim, that your Z offset is really well finely tuned because if it's too close, it can be a nightmare to get the parts off. If you're printing on a flex plate, that does make it pretty easy. If you're printing directly on build tack, you may wanna raise that Z offset because it's taken me some time to really get a spatula underneath there to get it out. And at the same time, if you have too little adhesion, you can run into issues like having the heart of darkness when you get to work in the morning. This was such a nightmare to come back to work to. I hope this has given you some direction on how to print large and fast with the Volcano hot end. But if you've already been printing with the Volcano, I'd love to see what you've been creating. So tag us on social media and show us your big prints. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you like that, give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all the big builds, how to's and troubleshooting guides I'll be working on. And don't forget, check out matterhackers.com to explore everything 3D printing and to join the community.